Hey folks, it's me, Joshua D. Um, today's tip uh, is basically around having a separate camera or you know multiple angles in your live stream. You know, a lot of people are asking me like, what are the best webcams that I can use? Who said you need a webcam, right? A lot of us have these really expensive iPhones or iDevices sitting around, you know, and during our live stream, they're either sitting there or you're using them to chat with people. You have a $1,400 device that has a 4K camera built into it. So I'm gonna show you today two ways of using uh, one piece of software that has a, a tethered connection and another piece of software that you can use on the phone uh, to do a Wi-Fi uh, camera. That will really help to do um, you know, the wide angle or the, or the multiple angle uh, approach to your, your filming. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to share my screen here and show you OBS and show you the different ways that you can set this up. Now you can go to obs.camera in your web browser, download and install this plugin. It only works for iOS devices, so that's the only caveat here. So once you're in OBS and you have all of the plugins set up, uh, you go to the plus sign in the sources collection and you click on iOS camera, which is a new source type here. So now I'm in the OBS camera app, right? And uh, there's a couple of different options around the screen here. It has the, the basics here. You, you have your, your other way of <laughs> to look at the camera. Um, you, you can turn the audio off in this, uh, in this guy. Um, you can also play around with some of the, uh, the brightness and the, uh, the um, auto exposure, et cetera, et cetera. You can actually turn the display off as well, meaning that you, know, you can save a little bit of battery if you're really tied to just a battery. Um, there's also some zooming features here. It only goes 1x or 2x, which... Hmm. Um, now, you can also play around with the resolutions. Um, I would not recommend going 4K. Uh, notice that it has 3840 by 2160. Don't go 4K, it's not useful. Um, really stick to 1080p for this one. And you click on output. There are two different outputs here. One which is USB and one which is uh, the NDI. Now, uh, I'm gonna talk about the other uh, solution here, which is the NDI cam uh, in a moment. Um, but uh, I would stick to OBS here, uh, the, the USB output, because that's the lowest latency. You can see on my screen on the, on the right-hand side, I'm waving and uh, you can see my mouth moving um, and, and, it, and it's working pretty well. So that's really the OBS camera. So I'm gonna switch over and show you the NDI cam now. So the other solution is NDI. NDI stands for Network Device Interface. Now, it's a special proprietary solution um, that uses a, uh, an app called NDI Cam, which you can look up all one word within the App Store. Um, this is also iOS, but there are Android solutions out there if you want to use NDI. So for this one, you're going to open up the NDI Cam, and I'm going to do that now, and then we're going to add the source to OBS. Okay, now I am in the, the NDI app, and you can see that it's a, it's a wide a wide angle lens. This app is the only one that I've found that actually supports the iPhone 11's three camera mode, which basically gives you this ultra wide angle uh, uh, lens that you can see um, a, a wider field of view. And it's very useful for DJ applications when you have a lot of equipment on your desk or some other type of shot like that. Um, and uh, so if you go into the cog wheel, there's a bunch of different app, app uh, options here. Um, this auto lens feature is the one I was talking about where if, if I go back here and I zoom in, you'll notice that once I zoom in enough, it will, sw it will look to like it's, it's switched the cameras a bit. And you can see that this is now just the two camera lens. And this is what you would see on like an iPhone um, 10 or, so, or something like that. Um, it's, it's, definitely a, it's, it's definitely a very high quality uh, picture. But if you zoom back out, you'll notice that it, it switch back, it switch, it automatically switches the uh, the lenses and the types here. So if I go back in here, the cog wheel. Let's talk about some of these other options. So the top left, and we're going to move our way right. Enable audio means turn on the mic. Uh, prevent sleep is very important. If you've got a really long uh, set that you're doing, like maybe a one or a two hour set, you're going to want to prevent that sleep from occurring so that it doesn't actually turn off the display and 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 turn off your camera. Um, a, the tally flash uh, basically means that it will uh, enable the ability to use the flash. Um, you've got two options for frame rate here, 25 frame per second, which will give you that kind of cinema quality, um, like a little bit slower um, and uh, less uh, movement involved. The 2997 is basically 30 frames per second, and that's you know standard. We usually use that in, in live streaming. Um, and then there's two options here for what type of NDI SDK to use. Now, um, 
in my experience, the full NDI is, is not very useful unless you have an Ethernet connection. You can buy a Lightning to Ethernet uh, adapter and plug that in and, and possibly use full NDI with no problems. Um, if you're over Wi-Fi though, I would highly suggest using NDI HX2, which is their latest SDK. Um, it offers you different frame rates here, uh, uh, bandwidth settings, I apologize. Um, and you can basically set this depending on your Wi-Fi connection, how close you are to the router and such. Um, I would suggest for something like uh, a 1080p stream, stick to about 10, maybe 12 megabits, um, and that should be sufficient, especially if you're on a good Wi-Fi connection. Okay, so we're back here, and now basically uh, there's a toggle up here on the top right where you can click and you can go live. And what does live mean? Live means basically now that this app is sending data over your uh, network and over the network it's basically going to become discoverable in our OBS app. So let me uh, move my hand over here <laughs> and let's uh, let's now go over to OBS and we're going to click on the, the plus sign here and there's an option for NDI source. I had to install the NDI OBS NDI plugin and I'll put the link to that in the, in the description below. And basically this is the way that we would need to add this. Um, so you're going to click on source name and notice here that I have my iPhone. Click on that and then within a, within a few minutes here um, you're going to see now I should have my, 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 my camera here and able to be used. Notice that there's a slight delay. That's just because we're over Wi-Fi. If you plug in with a lightning to ethernet it's, it's, you don't notice a delay. Um, with that, you're going to need to basically remember that your audio might be slightly delayed and there is a way that you can set a, um, a delay compensation and I'll show you how to do that in another, in another video, but that's outside of the scope of this one. All right, and those are the two apps that I would recommend using for different camera angles. Um, I've had very uh, great success with both of them and uh, it's going to depend on your use case. Um, if you have any comments, uh, put them in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer any questions. But remember to like, share, follow, and subscribe. All right, see you guys next time.